For five years running, EE has been awarded Best Network by independent testing company Root Metrics, and it's a prestigious award that I'm sure they want to continue to win. And while they were the first operator to launch 5G in the UK recently, this award will require potent 4G capability. Now, the way that EE has won this award for so long is in part due to a colossal amount of spectrum that they deploy onto their sites. And as of the coming days, they're going to start deploying even more. A typical urban EE site has 80 megahertz paired of mid to high band 4G spectrum. This is composed of 30 megahertz paired in 1800 megahertz, 20 megahertz on the first carrier and 10 megahertz on second carrier, then 15 megahertz on 2100 megahertz, and then 35 megahertz on 2600 on 20 megahertz and 15 megahertz carriers respectively. Some sites also have 5 megahertz of 800 megahertz as low band, and of course all of these numbers that I've just said are paired because this is frequency division duplex. Also, despite this huge amount of spectrum, EE has recently been rebuilding these sites in order to do full transmit, full receive, which massively increases the throughput capable on devices which themselves are capable of full streams per carrier, but also it improves conditions and performance for everybody because the mask can hear better and so on. So really it's win-win and through the combination of the large amount of spectrum and the 4 transmit 4 receive is how EE's 4G network is gigabit capable in many areas but the load is also incredibly high which is how getting gigabit speed is pretty difficult, although it's generally not too hard to get above a few hundred, so three or 400 megabits per second on EE, however. But the point of this video is that EE has 45 megahertz paired of 1800 megahertz. So why are they only using 30 megahertz paired? Well, going forward, they're widening it a bit more. So currently, all the kind of old situation that I've got on the diagram EE have the 20 megahertz carrier, which is EAR FCN 1667, and then the 10 megahertz one, which is EAR FCN 1811. You'll see on the sides, there are nice big chunks of 2G spectrum, which clearly they don't really need anymore because most of the traffic is going on to 4G, especially with voice over LTE or Volte. So, this spectrum is going to get shifted from 2G to 4G. And the way they're doing this is through a shunt and widen strategy. So the carrier, which is EAR FCN 1667, is getting shifted five megahertz downwards, which therefore means that it's EAR FCN becomes 1617. Now, actually, the interesting part with this is that EE launched their 4G services all the way back in 2012, so seven, nearly seven years ago, using EAR FCN 1617, but it was 10 megahertz back then with the whole rest of it being 2G, which just shows how far we've all moved on. Meanwhile, the 1811 carrier also gets shifted down five megahertz, so it then becomes EAR FCN 1761. But in this migration phase, we still only have 20 megahertz and 10 megahertz, so 30 megahertz total of 4G bandwidth. So pretty much like we had before, but it's been shifted. The next step is to widen that second carrier, 1761, to then swallow up some of that 2G space above it. And this creates a new EAR FCN because the center frequency has changed and the new EAR FCN is 1788. So now with 35 megahertz of contiguous spectrum as 4G in the middle, there's five megahertz for 2G on either side. And as time goes on, that will then get widened even further so that you then get 40 megahertz of 4G probably with five megahertz 2G. But I can't see that five megahertz of 2G going away anytime soon. But still, two 20 megahertz 4G carriers on the downlink, because of course, again, all these numbers are paired, 
will be very, very nice, especially in addition to that huge amount of other spectrum. So actually, with this being 35, it, shift, it increases their standard mid to high band 4G deployment to 85 megahertz paired or 90 megahertz if you take into account the 800 megahertz. And of course, there is actually, EE have 50 megahertz paired of 2600, so they could actually deploy more than 35 megahertz paired of 2600 on their macros, which will then get them into the 105 megahertz paired of 4G spectrum on sites, which is mad. It's, it's a huge amount of spectrum. And of course you can add the 40 megahertz of 5G on top of that. To some people watching this whose networks are deploying, say, 30 MHz paired of 4G across, say, 20 on 1800 and 10 on 800, for example, the idea of having 80, 85, 90, whatever MHz as a standard deployment probably seems a little bit extreme, but it really is required. And some of these sites with a huge amount of spectrum do get incredibly loaded. So the spectrum, the additional spectrum is definitely going to be very useful for them. And it's just a sign of how much data people are using nowadays and how much load they're putting on the networks. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one, which will probably be the last video that I shoot on this roof because scaffolding is going. Very sad.